How are new celestial objects named? Many stars and planets have names that date back to antiquity. The International Astronomical Union IAU, the professional astronomers organization, has attempted in this century, to standardize names given to newly discovered celestial objects and their surface features. Stars are generally called by their traditional names, most of which are of Greek, Roman, or Arabic origin. They are also identified by the constellation in which they appear. Designated in order of brightness by Greek letters. Thus Sirius is also called Alpha Canis Majoris. Which means it is the brightest star in the constellation Canis Major. Other stars are called by catalog numbers, which include the star's coordinates. Several commercial star registries exist, and for a fee you can submit a star name to them. These names are not officially recognized by the IAU. The IAU has made some recommendations for naming the surface features of the planets and their satellites. For example, features on Mercury are named for composers, poets, and writers. Features of Venus for women, and features on Saturn's moon Mimas for people and places in Arthurian legend. Comets are named for their discoverers. Newly discovered asteroids are first given a temporary designation consisting of the year of discovery plus two letters. The first letter indicates the half month of discovery, A equals first half of January. B equals second half of January, etc., and the second the order of discovery in that half month. Thus asteroid 2002 M was the 13th, M, asteroid discovered in the first half of March. E, in 2002. After an asteroid's orbit is determined. It is given a permanent number and its discoverer is given the honor of naming it. Asteroids have been named after such diverse things as mythological figures, Ceres. Vesta, an airline, Swissair, and the Beatles, Lennon, McCartney, Harrison, Starr. How are new celestial objects named? Many stars and planets have names that date back to antiquity. The International Astronomical Union, IAU, the professional astronomers organization, has attempted in this century to standardize names given to newly discovered celestial objects and their surface features. Stars are generally called by their traditional names, most of which are of Greek, Roman, or Arabic origin. They are also identified by the constellation in which they appear. Designated in order of brightness by Greek letters. Thus Sirius is also called Alpha Canis Majoris. Which means it is the brightest star in the constellation Canis Major. Other stars are called by catalog numbers, which include the star's coordinates. Several commercial star registries exist, and for a fee you can submit a star name to them. These names are not officially recognized by the IAU. 
the IAU has made some recommendations for naming the surface features of the planets and their satellites. For example, features on Mercury are named for composers, poets, and writers. Features of Venus for women, and features on Saturn's moon Mimas for people and places in Arthurian legend. Comets are named for their discoverers. Newly discovered asteroids are first given a temporary designation consisting of the year of discovery plus two letters. The first letter indicates the half month of discovery, A equals first half of January. B equals second half of January, etc., and the second the order of discovery in that half month. Thus asteroid 2002 M was the 13th, M, asteroid discovered in the first half of March. E, in 2002. After an asteroid's orbit is determined. It is given a permanent number and its discoverer is given the honor of naming it. Asteroids have been named after such diverse things as mythological figures, series. Vesta, an airline, Swissair, and the Beatles, Lennon, McCartney, Harrison, Starr. Is there life on Mars? The answer to this question still remains inconclusive. Data from the Phoenix mission to Mars confirmed the existence of water ice. In 2008, results of the Viking soil sample data have been disputed. Microfossil-like imprints contained in meteorites that originated from Mars may indicate early forms of life. Exploration of Mars continues with the Mars Exploration Rovers. Spirit and Opportunity, the Mars Odyssey Orbiter, and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Who was the first astronomer royal? The first astronomer royal was John Flamsteed, 1646 to 1719. He was appointed astronomer royal in 1675 when the Royal Greenwich Observatory was founded. Until 1972, the Astronomer Royal also served as the director of the Royal Greenwich Observatory. When do meteor showers occur? There are a number of groups of meteoroids orbiting the Sun just as Earth is. When Earth's orbit intercepts the path of one of these swarms of meteoroids, some of them enter Earth's atmosphere. When friction with the air causes a meteoroid to burn up, the streak, or shooting star, that is produced is called a meteor. Large numbers of meteors can produce a spectacular shower of light in the night sky. Meteor showers are named for the constellation that occupies the area of the sky from which they originate. Listed below are 10 meteor showers and the dates during the year during which they can be seen. What is a small solar system body?
The International Astronomical Union defines a small solar system body as all objects that orbit the Sun and are too small for their own gravity to pull them into a nearly spherical shape. Simply stated, they are all objects that do not meet the definition of a planet or dwarf planet. Examples of small solar system bodies are asteroids, near-Earth objects. Mars and Jupiter Trojan asteroids, most centaurs, most transneptunian objects, and comets. Besides the light year, what other units are used to measure distances in astronomy? The astronomical unit, O, is often used to measure distances within the solar system. 1 O is equal to the average distance between Earth and the Sun. Or 92,955,630 miles, 149,597,870 kilometers. The parsec is equal to 3.26 light years, or about 19.18 trillion miles, 30.82 trillion kilometers. What is a light year? A light year is a measure of distance, not time. It is the distance that light, which travels in a vacuum at the rate of 186,282 miles, 299,792 kilometers per second, can travel in a year, 365.25 days. This is equal to 5.87 trillion miles, 9.46 trillion kilometers. How do scientists know that some meteorites that were found in Antarctica came from the moon? Because of the high quality reference collection of lunar rocks collected during space flights to the moon. The original 1979 meteorite find in Antarctica and the 10 subsequent findings were verified as lunar in origin. What are the diameter and circumference of the Moon? The Moon's diameter is 2,159 miles, 3,475 kilometers. And its circumference is 6,790 miles, 10,864 kilometers. The moon is 27% the size of Earth. What are Kuiper belt objects? Kuiper Belt Objects, KBOs, are, as their name implies, objects that originate from or orbit in the Kuiper Belt. Only one KBO was known for more than 60 years, Pluto. Many KBOs have been discovered since 1992, however. And the current estimate is that there are millions, if not billions, of KBOs.
KBOs are basically comets without tails, icy dirt balls that have collected together over billions of years. If they get large enough such as Pluto did they evolve as other massive planet-like bodies do. Forming dense cores that have a different physical composition than the mantle or crust above it. Most short period comets those with relatively short orbital times of a few years to a few centuries are thought to originate from the Kuiper belt. How large is the solar system? The size of the solar system can be visualized by imagining the Sun, 864,000 miles in diameter. 1,380,000 kilometers, shrunk to a diameter of 1 inch, about the size of a ping-pong ball. Using the same size scale, Earth would be a speck 0.01 inches, 0.25 millimeters. In diameter and about 9 feet, 2.7 meters, away from the ping pong ball sized sun. Our moon would have a diameter of 0.0025 inches, 0.06 millimeters, the thickness of a human hair. And only a little over 1 quarter inch, 6.3 millimeters, from Earth. Jupiter the largest planet in the solar system, appears as the size of a small pea. 0 0.1 inches 2.5 millimeters in diameter, and 46 feet, 14 meters, from the sun. Why do stars twinkle? Stars actually shine with a more or less constant light. They appear to twinkle to those of us observing them from Earth due mostly to atmospheric interference. Molecules and dust particles float at random in Earth's covering of gases. When such floating particles pass between a star and a person observing it, there is a brief interruption in the stream of light. Added together, these brief interruptions give rise to twinkling stars. What are the largest Kuiper belt objects and how big are they? The following table lists the largest KBOs in our solar system that are known of today. What are the four types of nebulae? The four types of nebulae are emission, reflection, dark, and planetary. Primarily the birthplace of stars, nebulae are clouds of gas and dust in space. Emission nebulae and reflection nebulae are bright nebulae. Emission nebulae are colorful and self-luminous. The Orion Nebula, visible with the naked eye, is an example of an emission nebula. Reflection nebulae are cool clouds of dust and gas. They are illuminated by the light from nearby stars rather than by their own energy. Dark nebulae, also known as absorption nebulae, are not illuminated and appear as holes in the sky. 
The Horsehead Nebula in the constellation Orion is an example of a dark nebula. Planetary nebulae are the remnants of the death of a star. How far away is the nearest black hole? The black hole nearest to Earth is V4641 Sagittarii. It is 1,600 light years. 9,399,362,677,500,000 miles, away from Earth. What is a black hole? When a star with a mass greater than about four times that of the sun collapses even the neutrons cannot stop the force of gravity. There is nothing to stop the contraction, and the star collapses forever. The material is so dense that nothing not even light can escape. The American physicist John Wheeler, 1911 to 2008, gave this phenomenon the name black hole in 1967. Since no light escapes from a black hole, it cannot be observed directly. However, if a black hole existed near another star, it would draw matter from the other star into itself and, in effect, produce X-rays. In the constellation of Cygnus, there is a strong X-ray source named Cygnus X1. It is near a star. And the two revolve around each other. The unseen X-ray source has the gravitational pull of at least 10 suns and is believed to be a black hole. Another type of black hole, a primordial black hole, may also exist dating from the time of the Big Bang. When regions of gas and dust were highly compressed. Recently, astronomers observed a brief pulse of X-rays from Sagittarius A. A region near the center of the Milky Way galaxy. The origin of this pulse and its behavior led scientists to conclude that there is probably a black hole in the center of our galaxy. There are four other possible black holes, a Schwarzschild black hole has no charge and no angular momentum. A Reusner Nordstrom black hole has charge but seven no angular momentum. A Kerr black hole has angular momentum but no charge, and a Kerr Newman black hole has charge and angular momentum. Is Pluto a planet? When Pluto was first discovered in 1930 by American astronomer Clyde Tombaugh. 1906-1997, it was considered the ninth planet of our solar system. During the late 1990s and the beginning of the 21st century. Astronomers began to discover more objects orbiting beyond Neptune in the area known as the Transneptunian region. On the night of October 21, 2003, Mike Brown from Caltech, Chad Trujillo from the Gemini Observatory, and David Rabinovitz from Yale University discovered a new object more massive than Pluto with its own satellite. The International Astronomical Union, IAU, began to debate the question of what constitutes a planet. 
In 2006, the IAU approved a new definition of a planet. This definition states that a planet is, an object in orbit around the Sun an object with sufficient mass. Large enough, to have its self-gravity pull itself into a round. Or near spherical, shape has cleared the neighborhood around its orbit of other objects. Pluto no longer meets the definition of a planet because of its size and it is in the trans-Neptunian region. A zone of other similarly sized objects. Instead, Pluto is a dwarf planet. How many dwarf planets are in the solar system? A dwarf planet is an object in orbit around the Sun that has sufficient mass. Large enough, to have its own gravity pull itself into a round or near round shape. There are currently five objects which are considered dwarf planets. Ceres, Pluto, Eris, Make Make, and Homi. Scientists expect to discover additional dwarf planets or reclassify some large asteroids as dwarf planets. What is a binary star? A binary star is a pair of stars revolving around a common center of gravity. About half of all stars are members of either binary star systems or multiple star systems, which contain more than two stars. The bright star Sirius, about 8.6 light years away, is composed of two stars. One about 2.3 times the mass of the Sun, the other a white dwarf star about 980 times the mass of Jupiter. Alpha Centauri, the nearest star to Earth after the Sun, is actually three stars. Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, two Sun-like stars that orbit each other. And Alpha Centauri C, a low-mass red star that orbits around them. Does the Moon have an atmosphere? The Moon does have an atmosphere, however it is very slight. Having a density of about 50 atoms per cubic centimeter. Recently, scientists have discovered frozen water on the moon. What are the largest meteorites that have been found in the world? The famous Willamette, Oregon, iron, displayed at the American Museum of Natural History in New York, is the largest specimen found in the United States. It is 10 feet, 3 meters, long and 5 feet, 1.5 meters, high. What are quasars? The name quasar originated as a contraction of quasi-stellar radio source. Quasars appear to be star-like, but they have large redshifts in their spectra indicating 
that they are receding from Earth at great speeds, some at up to 90% the speed of light. Their exact nature is still unknown. But many believe quasars to be the cores of distant galaxies, the most distant objects yet seen. Quasars, also called quasi-stellar objects or QSOs, were first identified in 1963 by astronomers at the Palomar Observatory in California. What is a pulsar? A pulsar is a rotating neutron star that gives off sharp regular pulses of radio waves at rates ranging from 0.001 to 4 seconds. Stars burn by fusing hydrogen into helium. When they use up their hydrogen, their interiors begin to contract. During this contraction, energy is released and the outer layers of the star are pushed out. These layers are large and cool, the star is now a red giant. A star with more than twice the mass of the sun will continue to expand, becoming a supergiant. At that point, it may blow up in an explosion called a supernova. After a supernova, the remaining material of the star's core may be so compressed that the electrons and protons become neutrons. A star 1.4 to 4 times the mass of the sun can be compressed into a neutron star only about 12 miles. 20 kilometers across neutron stars rotate very fast the neutron star at the center of the crab nebula spins 30 times per second some of these neutron stars emit radio signals from their magnetic poles in a direction that reaches earth these signals were first detected by Jocelyn Bell 1943 of Cambridge University in 1967 because of their regularity some people speculated that they were extraterrestrial beacons constructed by alien civilizations this theory was eventually ruled out and the rotating neutron star came to be accepted as the explanation for these pulsating radio sources. What is a supernova? A supernova is the death explosion of a massive star. Immediately after the explosion, the brightness of the star can outshine the entire galaxy, followed by a gradual fading. A supernova is a fairly rare event. The last supernova observed in our galaxy was in 1604, in February 1987. Supernova 1987A appeared in the Large Magellanic Cloud, a nearby galaxy. What does it mean when a planet is said to be in opposition? A body in the solar system is in opposition when its longitude differs from the sun by 180 degrees. In that position, it is exactly opposite the sun in the sky and it crosses the meridian at midnight.
How are new celestial objects named? Many stars and planets have names that date back to antiquity. The International Astronomical Union IAU, the professional astronomers organization, has attempted in this century, to standardize names given to newly discovered celestial objects and their surface features. Stars are generally called by their traditional names, most of which are of Greek, Roman, or Arabic origin. They are also identified by the constellation in which they appear. Designated in order of brightness by Greek letters. Thus Sirius is also called Alpha Canis Majoris. Which means it is the brightest star in the constellation Canis Major. Other stars are called by catalog numbers, which include the star's coordinates. Several commercial star registries exist, and for a fee you can submit a star name to them. These names are not officially recognized by the IAU. The IAU has made some recommendations for naming the surface features of the planets and their satellites. For example, features on Mercury are named for composers, poets, and writers. Features of Venus for women, and features on Saturn's moon Mimas for people and places in Arthurian legend. Comets are named for their discoverers. Newly discovered asteroids are first given a temporary designation consisting of the year of discovery plus two letters. The first letter indicates the half month of discovery, A equals first half of January. B equals second half of January, etc., and the second the order of discovery in that half month. Thus asteroid 2002 M was the 13th, M, asteroid discovered in the first half of March. E, in 2002. After an asteroid's orbit is determined. It is given a permanent number and its discoverer is given the honor of naming it. Asteroids have been named after such diverse things as mythological figures, Ceres. Vesta, an airline, Swissair, and the Beatles, Lennon, McCartney, Harrison, Starr. How many meteorites land on Earth in a given year? Approximately 26,000 meteorites, each weighing over 3.5 ounces. 99.2 grams, land on Earth during a given year. 3,000 of these meteorites weigh more than 2.2 pounds, 1 kilogram. This figure is compiled from the number of fireballs visually observed by the Canadian Camera Network. Of that number, only 5 or 6 falls are witnessed or cause property damage. The majority fall in the oceans, which cover over 70% of Earth's surface. How old is the solar system? It is currently believed to be 4.5 billion years old. Earth and the rest of the solar system formed from an immense cloud of gas and dust. Gravity and rotational. 
forces caused the cloud to flatten into a disk and much of the cloud's mass to drift into the center. This material became the sun. The leftover parts of the cloud formed small bodies called planetesimals. These planetesimals collided with each other, gradually forming larger and larger bodies, some of which became the planets. This process is thought to have taken about 25 million years. When was the comet Heilbach first observed? Comet Hale-Bopp was first observed by Alan Hale in New Mexico and Thomas Bopp in Arizona on July 22, 1995. Their discovery was announced by the International Astronomical Union on July 23, 1995. Hale-Bopp was closest to Earth in March 1997 when it was 122 million miles, 196 million kilometers away. It is a very large comet with a nucleus of approximately 25 miles. 40 kilometers, in diameter, making it four times as large as Halley's Comet. Although most comets have two tails, Hale-Bopp exhibited three tails. The two tails typical of most comets are the dust tail and the ion tail. The dust tail, consisting of dust and debris from the nucleus, streams behind the comet in its orbit. The ion tail, consisting of the comet's material interacting with the solar wind, faces away from the sun. Hale-Bopp's third tail was composed of neutral sodium atoms. Hale-Bopp was visible with the naked eye for nearly 19 months. It is not expected to return for 4,000 years. What does the color of a star indicate? The color of a star gives an indication of its temperature and age. Stars are classified by their spectral type. From oldest to youngest and hottest to coolest, the types of stars are. Each type is further subdivided on a scale of 0 to 9. The Sun is a type G2 star. How does a meteorite differ from a meteoroid? A meteorite is a natural object of extraterrestrial origin that survives passage through Earth's atmosphere and hits Earth's surface. A meteorite is often confused with a meteoroid or a meteor. A meteoroid is a small object in outer space, generally less than 30 feet, 10 meters, in diameter. A meteor, sometimes called a shooting star, is the flash of light seen when an object passes through Earth's atmosphere and burns as a result of heating caused by friction. A meteoroid becomes a meteor when it enters Earth's atmosphere. If any portion of a meteoroid lands on Earth, it is a meteorite. There are three kinds of meteorites. Irons contain 85% to 95% iron, the rest of their mass is mostly nickel. 
Stony irons are relatively rare meteorites composed of about 50% iron and 50% silicates. When will Halley's Comet return? Halley's Comet returns about every 76 years. It was most recently seen in 1986 and is predicted to appear again in 2061, then in 2134. Every appearance of what is now known as Comet Halley has been noted by astronomers since the year 239 BCE. The comet is named for Edmund Halley, 1656 to 1742, England's second astronomer royal. In 1682 he observed a bright comet and noted that it was moving in an orbit. Similar to comets seen in 1531 and 1607. He concluded that the three comets were actually one and the same and that the comet had an orbit of 76 years. In 1705 Halley published a synopsis of the astronomy of comets, in which he predicted that the comet seen in 1531, 1607, and 1682 would return in 1758. On Christmas night, 1758. A German farmer and amateur astronomer named Johann Palitz spotted the comet in just the area of the sky that Halley had foretold. Prior to Halley, comets appeared at irregular intervals and were often thought to be harbingers of disaster and signs of divine wrath. Halley proved that they are natural objects subject to the laws of gravity. What are the phases of the moon? The phases of the moon are changes in the moon's appearance during the month which are caused by the moon's turning different portions of its illuminated hemisphere toward Earth. When the moon is between Earth and the sun, its daylight side is turned away from Earth. So it is not seen. This is called the new moon. As the moon continues its revolution around Earth, more and more of its surface becomes visible. This is called the waxing crescent phase. About a week after the new moon, half the moon is visible the first quarter phase. During the next week, more than half of the moon is seen, this is called the waxing gibbous phase. Finally, about two weeks after the new moon, the moon and sun are on opposite sides of Earth. The side of the moon facing the sun is also facing Earth. And all the moon's illuminated side is seen as a full moon. In the next two weeks the moon goes through the same phases. But in reverse from a waning gibbous to third or last quarter to waning crescent phase. Gradually, less and less of the moon is visible until a new moon occurs again. Who is considered the founder of systematic astronomy? The Greek scientist Hipparchus, c. 190 to 120 BCE, is considered to be the father of systematic astronomy. 
he measured as accurately as possible the directions of objects in the sky. He compiled the first catalogue of stars, containing about 850 entries. And designated each star's celestial coordinates, indicating its position in the sky. Hipparchus also divided the stars according to their apparent brightness or magnitudes. What is a syzygy? A syzygy, syzedzy, is a configuration that occurs when three celestial bodies lie in a straight line. Such as the sun, earth, and the moon during a solar or lunar eclipse. The particular syzygy when a planet is on the opposite side of Earth from the Sun is called an opposition. How far is the Moon from Earth? Since the Moon's orbit is elliptical, its distance varies from about 221,463 miles. 356,334 kilometers, at perigee, closest approach to Earth, to 251,968 miles, 405,503 kilometers. At apogee, farthest point, with the average distance being 238,857 miles, 384,392 kilometers. How can an observer distinguish planets from stars? In general, planets emit a constant light or shine, whereas stars appear to twinkle. The twinkling effect is caused by the combination of the distance between the stars and Earth and the refractive effect Earth's atmosphere has on a star's light. Planets are relatively closer to Earth than stars and their disk-like shapes average out the twinkling effect except when they're observed near Earth's horizon. What is an astrolabe? Invented by the Greeks or Alexandrians around 100 B. CE, an astrolabe is a two-dimensional working model of the heavens, with sites for observations. It consists of two concentric, flat disks, one fixed, representing the observer on Earth, the other moving. Which can be rotated to represent the appearance of the celestial sphere at a given moment. Given latitude, date, and time. The observer can read off the altitude and azimuth of the sun, the brightest stars, and the planets. By measuring the altitude of a particular body, one can find the time. The astrolabe can also be used to find times of sunrise, sunset, twilight, or the height of a tower or depth of a well. After 1600, it was replaced by the sextant and other more accurate instruments. What is an astrolabe?
invented by the Greeks or Alexandrians around 100 B.C.E., an astrolabe is a two-dimensional working model of the heavens, with sites for observations. It consists of two concentric, flat disks, one fixed, representing the observer on Earth, the other moving. Which can be rotated to represent the appearance of the celestial sphere at a given moment. Given latitude, date, and time. The observer can read off the altitude and azimuth of the sun, the brightest stars, and the planets. By measuring the altitude of a particular body, one can find the time. The astrolabe can also be used to find times of sunrise, sunset, twilight, or the height of a tower or depth of a well. After 1600, it was replaced by the sextant and other more accurate instruments. Who invented the telescope? Hans Lippershey, C. 1570-1619, a German-Dutch lens grinder and spectacle maker. Is generally credited with inventing the telescope in 1608 because he was the first scientist to apply for a patent. Two other inventors, Zacharias Janssen and Jacob Matthias, also developed telescopes. Modern historians consider Lippershey and Janssen as the two likely candidates for the title of inventor of the telescope, with Lippershey possessing the strongest claim. Lippershey used his telescope for observing grounded objects from a distance. In 1609, Galileo also developed his own refractor telescope for astronomical studies. Although small by today's standards, the telescope enabled Galileo to observe the Milky Way and to identify blemishes on the Moon's surface as craters. Who invented the telescope? Hans Lippershey, c. 1570-1619, a German-Dutch lens grinder and spectacle maker. Is generally credited with inventing the telescope in 1608 because he was the first scientist to apply for a patent. Two other inventors, Zacharias Janssen and Jacob Matthias, also developed telescopes. Modern historians consider Lippershey and Janssen as the two likely candidates for the title of inventor of the telescope, with Lippershey possessing the strongest claim. Lippershey used his telescope for observing grounded objects from a distance. In 1609, Galileo also developed his own refractor telescope for astronomical studies. Although small by today's standards, the telescope enabled Galileo to observe the Milky Way and to identify blemishes on the Moon's surface as craters. What are the differences between reflecting and refracting telescopes? Reflecting telescopes capture light using a mirror while refracting telescopes capture light with a lens. The advantages of reflecting telescopes are, 1, 
they collect light with a mirror so there is no color fringing. And 2, since a mirror can be supported at the back there is no size limit. In an effort to alleviate the problem of color fringing always associated with lenses. Isaac Newton built a reflecting telescope in 1668 that collected light with mirrors. What are the differences between reflecting and refracting telescopes? Reflecting telescopes capture light using a mirror while refracting telescopes capture light with a lens. The advantages of reflecting telescopes are, 1, they collect light with a mirror so there is no color fringing. And 2, since a mirror can be supported at the back there is no size limit. In an effort to alleviate the problem of color fringing always associated with lenses. Isaac Newton built a reflecting telescope in 1668 that collected light with mirrors. For whom is the Hubble Space Telescope named? Edwin Powell Hubble, 1889-1953, was an American astronomer known for his studies of galaxies. His study of nebulae, or clouds the faint. Unresolved luminous patches in the sky showed that some of them were large groups of many stars. Hubble classified galaxies by their shapes as being spiral, elliptical, or irregular. Hubble's law establishes a relationship between the velocity of recession of a galaxy and its distance. The speed at which a galaxy is moving away from our solar system. Measured by its redshift, the shift of its light to longer wavelengths, presumed to be caused by the Doppler effect, is directly proportional to the galaxy's distance from it. The Hubble Space Telescope was deployed by the Space Shuttle Discovery on April 25, 1990. The telescope which would be free of distortions caused by Earth's atmosphere was designed to see deeper into space than any telescope on land. However, on June 27, 1990, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration announced that the telescope had a defect in one of its mirrors that prevented it from properly focusing. Although other instruments, including one designed to make observations in ultraviolet light, were still operating. Nearly 40% of the telescope's experiments had to be postponed until repairs were made. On December 2, 1993, astronauts were able to make the necessary repairs. Four of Hubble's six gyroscopes were replaced as well as two solar panels. Hubble's primary camera, which had a flawed mirror, was also replaced. Since that mission four other servicing missions have been conducted, dramatically improving the HSD's capabilities. For whom is the Hubble Space Telescope named? Edwin Powell Hubble, 1889-1953, was an American astronomer known for his studies of galaxies. 
his study of nebulae, or clouds the faint. Unresolved luminous patches in the sky showed that some of them were large groups of many stars. Hubble classified galaxies by their shapes as being spiral, elliptical, or irregular. Hubble's law establishes a relationship between the velocity of recession of a galaxy and its distance. The speed at which a galaxy is moving away from our solar system. Measured by its redshift, the shift of its light to longer wavelengths, presumed to be caused by the Doppler effect, is directly proportional to the galaxy's distance from it. The Hubble Space Telescope was deployed by the Space Shuttle Discovery on April 25, 1990. The telescope, which would be free of distortions caused by Earth's atmosphere, was designed to see deeper into space than any telescope on land. However, on June 27, 1990, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration announced that the telescope had a defect in one of its mirrors that prevented it from properly focusing. Although other instruments, including one designed to make observations in ultraviolet light, were still operating. Nearly 40% of the telescope's experiments had to be postponed until repairs were made. On December 2, 1993, astronauts were able to make the necessary repairs. Four of Hubble's six gyroscopes were replaced as well as two solar panels. Hubble's primary camera, which had a flawed mirror, was also replaced. Since that mission four other servicing missions have been conducted, dramatically improving the HSD's capabilities. What is the Very Large Array, VLA, and what information have we learned from it? The Very Large Array, VLA, is one of the world's premier astronomical radio observatories. The VLA consists of 27 antennas arranged in a huge Y pattern up to 22 miles, 36 kilometers. Across roughly one and a half times the size of Washington, D.C. Each antenna is 81 feet. 25 meters, in diameter, they are combined electronically to give the resolution of an antenna 22 miles. 36 kilometers, across, with the sensitivity of a dish 422 feet, 130 meters, in diameter. Each of the 27 radio telescopes in the VLA is the size of a house and can be moved on train tracks. In its 22nd year of operation, the VLA has been one of the most productive observatories. With more than 2,200 scientists using it for more than 10,000 separate observing projects. The VLA has been used to discover water on the planet Mercury, radio bright coronae around ordinary stars. Microquasars in our galaxy, gravitationally induced Einstein rings around distant galaxies and radio counterparts to cosmologically distant gamma-ray bursts. The vast size of the VLA has allowed astronomers to study the details of superfast cosmic jets and even map the center of our galaxy. What is the Very Large Array, VLA, and what information have we learned from it?
The Very Large Array, VLA, is one of the world's premier astronomical radio observatories. The VLA consists of 27 antennas arranged in a huge Y pattern up to 22 miles, 36 kilometers. Across roughly one and a half times the size of Washington, D.C. Each antenna is 81 feet. 25 meters, in diameter, they are combined electronically to give the resolution of an antenna 22 miles. 36 kilometers, across, with the sensitivity of a dish 422 feet, 130 meters, in diameter. Each of the 27 radio telescopes in the VLA is the size of a house and can be moved on train tracks. In its 22nd year of operation, the VLA has been one of the most productive observatories. With more than 2,200 scientists using it for more than 10,000 separate observing projects. The VLA has been used to discover water on the planet Mercury, radio bright coroni around ordinary stars. Microquasars in our galaxy, gravitationally induced Einstein rings around distant galaxies. And radio counterparts to cosmologically distant gamma ray bursts. The vast size of the VLA has allowed astronomers to study the details of superfast cosmic jets. And even map the center of our galaxy. Who are the fathers of space flight? In 1903, Konstantin E. Tsiolkovsky, 1857-1935, a Russian high school teacher, completed the first scientific paper on the use of rockets for space travel. Several years later, Robert H. Goddard, 1882-1945, of the United States and Hermann Oberth, 1894-1989, of Germany awakened wider scientific interest in space travel. These three men worked individually on many of the technical problems of rocketry and space travel. They are known, therefore, as the fathers of space flight. In 1919, Goddard wrote the paper, a method of reaching extreme altitudes, which explained how rockets could be used to explore the upper atmosphere and described a way to send a rocket to the moon. During the 1920s Tsiolkovsky wrote a series of new studies that included detailed descriptions of multi-stage rockets. In 1923, Oberth wrote the rocket into interplanetary space, which discussed the technical problems of space flight and also described what a spaceship would be like. Who are the fathers of space flight? In 1903, Konstantin E. Tsiolkovsky, 1857-1935, a Russian high school teacher, completed the first scientific paper on the use of rockets for space travel. Several years later, Robert H. Goddard, 1882-1945, of the United States and Hermann Oberth, 1894-1989, of Germany awakened wider scientific interest in space travel. These three men worked individually on many of the technical problems of rocketry and space travel. 
they are known, therefore, as the fathers of space flight. In 1919, Goddard wrote the paper, A Method of Reaching Extreme Altitudes, which explained how rockets could be used to explore the upper atmosphere and described a way to send a rocket to the moon. During the 1920s Tsiolkovsky wrote a series of new studies that included detailed descriptions of multi-stage rockets. In 1923, Oberth wrote the rocket into interplanetary space, which discussed the technical problems of space flight and also described what a spaceship would be like. What is the difference between zero gravity and microgravity? Zero gravity is the absence of gravity. A condition in which the effects of gravity are not felt, weightlessness. Microgravity is a condition of very low gravity, especially approaching weightlessness. On a spaceship, while in zero microgravity, objects would fall freely and float weightlessly. Both terms, however, are technically incorrect. The gravitation in orbit is only slightly less than the gravitation on Earth. A spacecraft and its contents continuously fall toward Earth. It is the spacecraft's immense forward speed that appears to make Earth's surface curve away as the vehicle falls toward it. The continuous falling seems to eliminate the weight of everything inside the spacecraft. For this reason, the condition is sometimes referred to as weightlessness or zero gravity. What is the difference between zero gravity and microgravity? Zero gravity is the absence of gravity. A condition in which the effects of gravity are not felt, weightlessness. Microgravity is a condition of very low gravity, especially approaching weightlessness. On a spaceship, while in zero microgravity, objects would fall freely and float weightlessly. Both terms, however, are technically incorrect. The gravitation in orbit is only slightly less than the gravitation on Earth. A spacecraft and its contents continuously fall toward Earth. It is the spacecraft's immense forward speed that appears to make Earth's surface curve away as the vehicle falls toward it. The continuous falling seems to eliminate the weight of everything inside the spacecraft. For this reason, the condition is sometimes referred to as weightlessness or zero gravity. When was the Outer Space Treaty signed? The United Nations Outer Space Treaty was signed on January 23, 1967. The treaty provides a framework for the exploration and sharing of outer space. It governs the outer space activities of nations that wish to exploit and make use of space. The Moon, and other celestial bodies. It is based on a humanist and pacifist philosophy and on the principle of the 
non-appropriation of space and the freedom that all nations have to explore and use space. A very large number of countries have signed this agreement. Including those from the Western Alliance, the former Eastern Bloc, and non-aligned countries. Space law, or those rules governing the space activities of various countries, international organizations and private industries, has been evolving since 1957, when the General Assembly of the United Nations created the Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, COPYAS. One of its subcommittees was instrumental in drawing up the 1967 Outer Space Treaty. When was the Outer Space Treaty signed? The United Nations Outer Space Treaty was signed on January 23, 1967. The treaty provides a framework for the exploration and sharing of outer space. It governs the outer space activities of nations that wish to exploit and make use of space. The Moon, and other celestial bodies. It is based on a humanist and pacifist philosophy and on the principle of the non-appropriation of space and the freedom that all nations have to explore and use space. A very large number of countries have signed this agreement. Including those from the Western Alliance, the former Eastern Bloc, and non-aligned countries. Space law, or those rules governing the space activities of various countries, international organizations, and private industries, has been evolving since 1957, when the General Assembly of the United Nations created the Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, COPYAS. One of its subcommittees was instrumental in drawing up the 1967 Outer Space Treaty. What is meant by the phrase greening of the galaxy? The expression means the spreading of human life, technology, and culture through interstellar space and eventually across the entire Milky Way galaxy, Earth's home galaxy. What is meant by the phrase greening of the galaxy? The expression means the spreading of human life, technology, and culture through interstellar space and eventually across the entire Milky Way galaxy, Earth's home galaxy. What is a close encounter of the third kind? UFO expert J. Alan Hinek, 1910-1986, developed the following scale to describe encounters with extraterrestrial beings or vessels. Close encounter of the first kind sighting of a UFO at close range with no other physical evidence. Close encounter of the second kind sighting of a UFO at close range. But with some kind of proof, such as a photograph, or an artifact from a UFO. 
close encounter of the third kind sighting of an actual extraterrestrial being. Close encounter of the fourth kind abduction by an extraterrestrial spacecraft. What is a close encounter of the third kind? UFO expert J. Alan Hinek, 1910-1986, developed the following scale to describe encounters. With extraterrestrial beings or vessels. Close encounter of the first kind sighting of a UFO at close range with no other physical evidence. Close encounter of the second kind sighting of a UFO at close range. But with some kind of proof, such as a photograph, or an artifact from a UFO. Close encounter of the third kind sighting of an actual extraterrestrial being. Close encounter of the fourth kind abduction by an extraterrestrial spacecraft. Who was the first man in space? Yuri Gagarin, 1934 to 1968. A Soviet cosmonaut, became the first man in space when he made a full orbit of Earth in Vostok I on April 12, 1961. Gagarin's flight lasted only 1 hour and 48 minutes. But as the first man in space, he became an international hero. Partly because of this Soviet success, U.S. President John F. Kennedy, 1917-1963, announced on May 25, 1961, that the United States would land a man on the moon before the end of the decade. The United States took its first step toward that goal when it launched the first American into orbit on February 20, 1962. Astronaut John H. Glenn Jr., 1921. Completed three orbits in Friendship 7 and traveled about 81,000 miles, 130,329 kilometers. Prior to this, on May 5, 1961, Alan B. Shepard Jr., 1923 to 1998, became the first American to pilot a space flight. Aboard Freedom 7. This suborbital flight reached an altitude of 116.5 miles, 187.45 kilometers. Who was the first man in space? Yuri Gagarin, 1934 to 1968, a Soviet cosmonaut, became the first man in space when he made a full orbit of Earth in Vostok I on April 12, 1961. Gagarin's flight lasted only 1 hour and 48 minutes. But as the first man in space, he became an international hero. Partly because of this Soviet success, U.S. President John F. Kennedy, 1917-1963, announced on May 25, 1961, that the United States would land a man on the moon before the end of the decade. The United States took its first step toward that goal when it launched the first. American into orbit on February 20, 1962.
Astronaut John H. Glenn Jr., 1921. Completed three orbits in Friendship 7 and traveled about 81,000 miles, 130,329 kilometers. Prior to this, on May 5, 1961, Alan B. Shepard Jr., 1923 to 1998, became the first American to pilot a space flight. Aboard Freedom 7. This suborbital flight reached an altitude of 116.5 miles, 187.45 kilometers. What did NASA mean when it said Voyager 1 and 2 would take a grand tour of the planets? Once every 176 years the giant outer planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune align themselves in such a pattern that a spacecraft launched from Earth to Jupiter at just the right time might be able to visit the other three planets on the same mission. A technique called gravity assist used each planet's gravity as a power boost to point Voyager toward the next planet. The first opportune year for the Grand Tour was 1977. What did NASA mean when it said Voyager 1 and 2 would take a Grand Tour of the planets? Once every 176 years the giant outer planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune align themselves in such a pattern that a spacecraft launched from Earth to Jupiter at just the right time might be able to visit the other three planets on the same mission. A technique called gravity assist used each planet's gravity as a power boost to point Voyager toward the next planet. The first opportune year for the Grand Tour was 1977.